Okay, so um, today we'll be talking about three-point lighting. So um, so to understand what is it, so basically three-point lighting are the the very basic um, lighting scenarios that you'll hear from um, people or the DP where they, they, they use it throughout their short films, their movie. And it's, and it's very commonly used in most of the shots that you see on movies or, or any other things like TV commercials or TV dramas or anything. Okay, so what is three-point lighting? So three-point lighting basically consists of three lights, three different kinds of lights. Uh, not different kinds, but three lights. And um, usually they are named the key light, which means the the main light source in a scene. Um, and usually it's the, the strongest light source in the scene that defines where the, the main light source direction is coming from. Okay, so that's your key light. Feel light usually is the secondary light that is placed in the sh in the shadow side of the subject. Um, so usually what it does is it helps to lift the shadow areas um, a little bit brighter. So it you do not, you do not get a very contrast look from your key light. Okay, and then the last light will be the rim light. Some people like to call it the back light or the hair light. Um, so. Yeah, there's different naming to it, but it, it all means the same thing. Basically, it's a rim light that helps to outline your um, character. And it gives that... Uh, so what it does is it helps to separate your character from the background. Okay, so that's the, the use of rim light. And um, it, it's always used in um, shots that, you know, um, to help exaggerate the character's outline or the contour of the character. So um so those are the three lights that, that are commonly used in the three point lighting. Okay. There are times where few lights are replaced with reflectors. So because at like like we said, few lights are usually a very soft um lights or very low exposure lights that, that are used to help lift the shadow side. So a reflector can also do the job. So so depends on the scenario or the scene or the shots. Um, a reflector might be used to replace the field light to just help to bounce back some of the light from the key back onto the character. For example, if you can see my, my screen here. Um, so for example, if I have a key coming from screen right, I can have the reflector, someone holding a reflector uh, behind here and bouncing back that key light onto the character's screen left face. So that will just helps to add a bit of the bounce um, and you help to lift the, the shadow side of his face a little bit brighter. And then uh, again, you have the rim light to help um, outline him so it separates him from the background. Okay, so that is the basics um, of three-point lighting. Um, I mean, to put it in words, it's like that. And of course, I will show you guys um, a demo on how I do it proper in, in the 3D scenes. Okay, before I move on, Okay, so when people say three-point lighting, usually it means um, on a subject or a character. Okay, um, you, you will never hear people say, I use a three-point lighting for an environment, right? Because the, the environment could be so big and you can't, uh, I mean, it, it, it's just not for environment. So basically it's for like your character, your subject, your animal or your creature, your monster in a scene, right? So, it, so it's for subject and it's not for environment, okay? Okay, so now if you look at my Maya scene, I have a very simple scene. So this scene is from Matt, um, of the students who did an animation and I just recreate a, a camera and I frame it this way so that I can use it for a demo to showcase um, a three-point lighting uh, in this scenario. So basically it's, a, it's like a spacecraft scene and um, Everything is enclosed, okay? Okay, so what um, I like to do, again, this is my personal workflow that um, I, I like to work with. Uh, it's no right or wrong. Um, it doesn't mean that you start, I mean, if you work in a different way, it means that uh, you are wrong. So, um, so, so just take my demo as a, a pinch of, uh, I mean, just as a reference. Okay, so normally I like to start with um, my key light. So if I were to uh, go to the, my Arnold tab and I go to likes, I like to work with area likes. So I create an area like. Okay, um, a good habit is um, always name your likes. So when you go back to outliner, you know exactly um, what and where is your likes. So I would like to work with my key first. So I'll name, uh, 
So I like to give it um, LGT means like, and I'll put it key. Okay, I'll create a key like. Okay, if I look at my scene, it should be at the origin. Okay, okay, I will. Okay, hold on. Let me just show my likes. Okay, okay. So first, um, I like to work with like size that are relatively close to. Of course, we know that get a hundred percent physically correct like because we are working full CG stuff right and we don't have a uh, proper set likes that will place there okay but I would like to keep the, the like size as physically possible as it can be uh, what I mean by that because sometimes I see people with creating likes that are like this style of size which is bigger than a, a character probably a human so it um so things like that probably it's too big or sometimes people work with really very tiny legs um, and then they have to crank up the exposure like crazy so what I like to do is I like to work with something that is um, so if I take this as a human head size I imagine the set legs if in real world scenario it will be something bigger than the head size um, maybe a lot bigger okay then okay I, I can work with that okay so another tips that I like to work with is I like to look through the light and I place them uh, accordingly. So select your light, go to panel and look through selected. Okay, that way we can we are looking through our light point of view and we can place the light. So first I like to work with my key light first. So I will just, so um, I think I will just plan it this way that I have my key light coming from screen right and then I will have my rim behind him. Okay, so screen right, so somewhere here. Okay, so if I were to rotate my legs like that, it will be you the legs will wrap around too much of his face. Then you lose the, the shaping, right? So I, I like to first maybe I work with something um, on the side, maybe like that. First. Or uh, again, another um things that to take note. Um sometimes I see people that put legs that are so close to a character. I mean in, in real world scenario, um, you can't do that, right? The, the character or your actor face will get burned. Um, so um, you, you will put the light um, at a reasonable uh, place that it will make sense. Of course, uh, sometimes you still have to cheat some stuff, but um, if you can, just keep them um, as physically possible as possible. Yeah, so something like that. Okay. So I created my key light. So uh, first, I will need to go into my um, lights. Okay, um, let's just work with a base exposure of ten first and take a look at um, how how it's reacting with my character. So I'll just do a render. Okay, so yeah, the shaping isn't too bad, but personally, I feel that it's wrapped around a little bit too much. Like um, I would like to keep the screen left face a little bit more darker. So I want the the source to be more side lit so I will go to my um, light view so I rotate it a bit more okay okay um, another things that I like to do is I will take snapshots okay if you don't know you can click here to take a snapshot that will save your current render interactive render here and then do a render again okay so now if I were to compare you can see that after rotating my lights I'm getting uh, a nicer shaping here right Rather than that, okay. So now it feels a little too uh, side lit. Okay. So again, I will just rotate slightly back. Okay. What's nice with this key light is um, uh, people like to achieve this thing called the Rembrandt lighting. Okay. Um, if you guys don't know, uh, give me a moment. Okay. Here, Rembrandt lighting. Okay. So if you guys search this word and. Basically means that um, from the key light, it creates this um, triangle on the opposite side of the subject's face. Um, so you see very often in portraits, you get these triangles uh, on the opposite side of the key direction, right? So they call it the Rembrandt lighting and you see it's the triangle here. And it's, I mean, it's, it's very common and that way it gives a, a nice appealing look on your character. Uh, but maybe our character's uh, proportion does not allow us to do that. Uh, but for you guys, just keep in mind that if you guys ever have a, a proper proportion character, uh, 
you can try to use your key like to achieve this Rembrandt like thing and get this nice triangle on the screen left side. Okay, so I'll just okay. Not too bad. I managed to get something on the cheek. Um, I think I can work with this. So I'll just keep my key like at this as it is. Um, but I think because it's the key like right, I would like to feel the key like a lot more. So by shifting this slider, I can interactively see how much more I want to increase my key like exposure. Right. Okay, this is probably a touch too much. Okay, maybe say 1.5 stops. Okay, so I'll go to my, so I'll save this render. I'll go to my exposure and increase by 1.5. Okay, to render. Okay, cool. I got my nice key light. Um, I like the, the values, it's not too bad. Um, color wise, later we can come back to it. So I will just leave it as white. Okay, so now we set up our key light. So that's done. So again, um, go light by light. Do not start creating all the lights in our scene and everything just blasts onto your character. You don't know um, what your likes are actually doing onto your character. So I would like to work like by like. So okay. so I've done my key like, so I'll just do my fill. So same thing, I'll create a, a area like, okay. Fill up, scale it up something. Maybe this is something softer. So I imagine in, uh, or reflector. So imagine it's slightly bigger, okay. Then we'll call this um, the fill light. Okay, so same thing, I would like to look through the light. Okay, okay. so this, we, we mentioned that we want it to come from screen left, right, somewhere here, to fill up this shadow area so it doesn't feel so um, dramatic. Okay, so maybe something like that. Okay, and we know that this light um, is a fill light, so it shouldn't be as strong as our key light. So maybe I'll start with exposure of six first. Okay, I will save my current lighting. Okay, do a render. Okay, so now if I were to compare before and after, you can see that it helps to lift up the, the shadow side a little. Okay, maybe it's too dark. Let's see if I can push it. Maybe just try to stop more. Okay, so I'll just put seven. Save this image and I render again. Okay, cool. Now, okay, so before and after the feel like, yeah, not too bad, I think. Yeah, let's just judge the overall image as a whole. Okay, I will let it resolve a little bit longer. Um, yeah, I think it's fine for my taste. Maybe it's a little a little dark, but um, we can we can do it. We can of course further polish it later. Now we just want to get the the rough idea and the position of where all the light should be. Okay, so now I've done my my fill light that's coming from screen left. Then next we want the rim light. Okay, to, to separate out our character from the background. If see without the the rim light, you can see that the shoulders is almost blending into the background, right? So that's the, the help of the key, I mean the rim light too. Okay, so same thing, I will create a um, area light. Okay, okay, make it somewhere like um, the, the key light size. Okay, then I'll look through the light. Okay, before that, let me just name my light. And again, let me save my file first, just in case it crash. Okay, this one woman, let me save my file. Okay, save. Okay, so now I'm working with my rim light, and we know that we, the rim light will be coming from the back of the character, and usually um, I like to keep it higher, so it outlines the character and the shoulder a bit more. Of course, we can bias it to the left or the right, uh, however you want. But let's just try it, something like that, and see what it gives us first. Okay, so rim light, usually we want a strong light um, that, that helps to outline the character. So I let's just go crazy and start with 15. Okay, then we render. Cool, yeah, it does help to, to get some nice um, outline of the character. Okay, I'll just let it resolve a bit more. Yeah, um, 
personally, I would, for creative purposes, I would like to offset the, the rim light a bit more to screen left. So it, it probably can help to outline his face and his screen left shoulder a bit more. Uh, we don't need to help separate his screen right arm, right? Because it's already hit by the, the key light so strong. So what I can do, maybe I can put it slightly to the screen left. Okay. Okay. This exposure wise, maybe I want to go a bit more. Let's just try 16. Okay, I save this image, render again. Yeah, so now you see, I get a very dramatic um, light from screen left, but I think it's wrapping around the shoulder a little much. Um, okay, um, let's just look at the full image. Yeah, I think it's wrapping around the shoulder a little too much, so I will just shift the light back a little bit. Okay, save this and do a test render. Okay, before and after. Ah, but I'm losing on the face. Okay, uh, we can try to rotate it. Okay, I'll let it resolve a bit more. Okay. Um, yeah, I think it's okay. I can rotate the light a bit more to the front. Uh, it, yeah, let's just do that. Okay, I'll save this. Rotate the light slightly to the front so it catches the face a bit more. Or if I don't want it to hit the shoulder so much, I can bring the light down a little bit. Okay, something like that. And then, and the, yep, see, um, it eliminates from the shoulder and it still gives me the nice rim before and after. Yeah, I like it. Um, yep, I think I like it. So I think it's, of course, too, too bright now. So let's just change back to 15. Um, Although it gives a gives a very nice dramatic look, but uh, not not too much, I guess. Okay, let it resolve longer. Ah, no, where's my render view? Okay, my computer is lagging. Hold. Okay, stop. Yep, so this is the, the look that we have achieved so far. Okay, so now, um, so this is the, the basic um, three-point lighting. Of course, if a, a little bit of rim here will be nice, we can create a, a separate rim light uh, to just add a bit of the rim um, later on if we want. But I think this as a, as a base to, to work with, it's um, good enough personally, I feel. Um, okay. What do I mean by as a base and it's good enough? Okay, so in uh, in scenarios like you need a different kind of mood uh, or a different kind of lighting environment uh, or uh, you're trying to convey a different message, you need the lighting to be different, right? Uh, you can always start with three-point lighting and then you start uh, removing lights that you don't need. For example, um, if a scene like that and I want to make it uh, scary. Um, what I can do is I can, uh, let me just duplicate so I don't mess up with my key, okay. I can put my key light lower. So select my key light. So I have the key light from below so that it gives the up lighting. Um, okay, so let's just look through. Then I can do things like that, no? It, so it casts the shadow back onto the, the, the forehead. Let's just do a test render. Of course, uh, you can do a lot more, but um, that's what I meant. Yeah, so you can do things like that. And then of course you can remove your fill if it's too much, that, so you can make it scarier. Um, you can exaggerate your rim, um, as a more, more rim on the screen right side. So um, using it as a base and then turning on and off the, the lights uh, from there to achieve the result that you want. Um, it's also possible. So yeah, so don't think of the three point lighting just uh, uh, like like the default look that gives you this look. No, uh, it also can further tweak from there and gives you the, the look that you desire uh, in in the scene that or the mood that you want. Okay, okay. So, but now we are not trying to, to do this. So I will just hide this, uh, bring back my normal three point lighting. Uh, Okay, cool. So that is the three-point lighting. Um, 
on top of this, I would like to talk about colors. So because colors will help to uh, exaggerate the the mood of your your scene. So if you lead a a scene with all neutral colors like that, you no, know, it it looks okay. Your characters have a shaping, but it does not um uh, feel interesting, right? We want to convey a message, right? So now we can imagine. I mean, um. Uh, uh, there's something that's exploding from the, the screen right side. That's why the, the key is so strong. And we pretend this key is from the explosion. Then what we can do is we can go into our key light and change the color to uh, uh, orange maybe. Right? That way we can pretend that it's from the explosion. Okay? Then say um, no, um, some alarm goes off and the, the rim light is actually cast by an alarm siren and it's a red color. So we can do like that. Okay, we can choose the red color. Um, you can tweak the saturation however, however you want. Then say the, the, the ship or the spacecraft actually the, the default lights or the environment colors is maybe a blue or light uh, bluish tone or something like that maybe. Maybe just very subtly. Okay, so now if, uh, of course, uh, all this color I just mix in um, very randomly, but from there we, we can judge later. So let's just do a test render. Okay, okay, the scene gone gone crazy, The all the colors mix. Okay, so I would say now our feel like, hmm. Let me just turn off this this uh, rim light first. It's messing up the, the colors. We can't really tell. Okay, so the explosion color doesn't look too bad. Um, the blue from screen left, probably now with the overpowering um, orange, it doesn't really feel the feel light as much. So I can increase the exposure a little bit. Okay, um, do a snapshot. Okay, maybe the blue is not saturated enough. Uh, we want to exaggerate the the warm and cool lighting, right? Or you can push it even more. Right? Okay, again, all this we can fine tune them later on in in new if we really want to shift the colors. Um, but we can just get an overall uh nice look here. Okay, maybe this blue isn't very nice. Let's just try. It. Yep, a lot of trial and error. Um, okay, let me just... Okay, then shift the exposure a bit more. So, okay, let's just put to 10. And see what it gives us, okay. Yeah, it gives a bit of the nice um, feel, cool feel from screen left side. And then um, now we want to tweak our rim. So of course the rim now do, does looks crazy bright. So we'll reduce the exposure. Try 13. Then we want to say, we said earlier we want a red, right? Um, siren. Okay. So immediately you can see that your scene starts to feel more. There's a storytelling uh, factor to it. Um, it. People can imagine what's happening in your scene rather than just this right um, your your neutral lighting and then this people can can feel what's happening of course you need to go in and further um, like your environment accordingly but today topic we're just covering this three point lighting on the character so um, you will need to go in and fill up your environment to to help tie in everything um, or at least let the audience read a bit of the the details on your environment so uh, people can tell where he is um, actually. Okay, cool. And yeah, I think that's over our course. Maybe it's still a touch too bright. Uh, let's just try 10. Yeah, okay. Um, personally, the blue, I'm not a fan of this really saturated. I think I'll just keep it a bit more neutral. Yeah. 
then maybe I want to play up the, the warmth of the explosion a little bit more, I can shift the colors. Yeah, something like that. So, so the point is you can play with colors and to achieve a, a different kind of look. Um, say if I save this, I shift my my fill to maybe a very saturated green color. So it then it will give us a, a different feel to the shot, right? So color does plays a, a very big part in in the the story or the mood that you want to convey on your on your renders. Of course, tweaking colors like that in Maya, it's a bit tedious because you know you shift the colors. Um, unless you 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 specifically know the colors that you want to use or the temperature that you want to use. If not, you'll be just be shifting colors like that. And because this scene is simple, it it renders fast. But if you have a more complicated scene, I would recommend you put your lights in neutral. Um, then go into new, shift the color however you want to the colors. Uh that best fit your scene and then um, bring back the values of all the, the colors, the RGB into new, onto your likes, then render it as it is. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's the, the topic that we want to cover today, the three point lighting. Um, hopefully it helped you guys um, have a better understanding of this three point lighting. Thank you.